the performing arts community, particularly in Nairobi, but in the Eastern African region about um, how a lot of our practices are really distinctly defined, just as any regions are, um, by our history and our ancestry and our sort of pre-colonial, during the colonial and present, you know, hist histories and uh, uh, stories. So uh, we thought, why not speak to different women who have been working in the field in different capacities and, and learn about their experience and journey. So Wanjiku, why don't you tell us who you are as a theater artist to start with? Um, well, I'm an actor. I started out as an actor before I transitioned into directing. Um, so that being said, I have a lot of respect for actors. Um, I began uh, my practice early 2012, yeah, um, as an actor in school. I went to Kenyatta University. And um, there, once there, we used to have um, small, a small society for theater actors. And um, we'd perform our shows. And so basically, I just got a lot of interest and started looking at what is happening in the Kenya industry in general. And um, so I got to perform on a lot of professional shows at um, at the Phoenix. I performed one show at the Phoenix and some with Friends Ensemble. And yeah, I got to experience directors like Millicent Ogutu, um, Ogutu Muraya, and um, Lydia Gitashu, who really honed my skill and helped me to, to blossom as an actor. I, of course, I didn't like get to the level that I didn't get to a professional level as an actor before um, I was tagged into directing <laughs> quite accidentally <laughs> by a few friends of mine at our society who said, um, you know, we have this show, we don't have a director. How about you come in because you have more quote unquote professional experience because you've worked in the industry. And um, I decided, you know what, why, why, why don't I try it? It couldn't be had. <laughs> it was. <laughs> and um, <laughs> after that, I realized directing is a craft that needs work like any other. And I just fell in love, fell in love with, with creating a vision, creating a dream and helping other people execute it. And after that, um, after directing my first show in campus, uh, I ended up directing another um, as the final year project. And then that opened doors for uh, places like the theater company that I worked with. And um, years later, I found myself, um, I found myself pregnant <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, I need to do something with my art, something more, because at the time we were still very focused on British faces because um, those were the only uh, scripts we could access. Playwriting hadn't opened up. So um, I, I, with a couple of friends, I got an idea to, to do a show called We Won't Forget, which was like my debut as a professional director. Um, the first show I co-directed with a lady called Alice Kombani. She really helped me um, come up with the idea and actually make it work. Um, I worked with a team of actors who coincidentally also ended up being the actors I went out, went with to, to Ali for Birds. So yeah, we won't forget, ended up getting a lot of critical acclaim. Um, we, went, we went to festivals like Ubumuntu, um, the um, Kampala International Theatre Festival. And um, after that, we started doing it in Kenya more because it focused on the post-election violence and um, terrorism as domestic, to domestic terrorism basically for the post-election violence and terrorism as a whole. And um, that gave me purpose as a person because I felt like I'm now saying something. I'm actually talking about our stories and actually making a difference in the world. And um, after that, um, after doing We Won't Forget, we had a lot of reruns because um, the show spoke to a lot of people. Um, 
that's when I, I worked with Abu, um, Abu Sense for the first time, um, Gatia for the second time, actually not second, we'd worked with Gatia a lot. And um, because we'd worked together so well on the last, um, re the last run of We Won't Forget, Abu Bakar and, um, and, and Gatia thought, you know what, come through and direct. We have this brain child of ours called Twelve for Birds. Um, could you come and direct? And of course, they passed it through the Kadzitu Sisters, Code Inc. Um, they run a company called Code Inc. And our producer, Miriam Kadzitu, was like, yes, we want her. So we worked, we'd also worked with her, and we won't forget. And um, that beautiful um, partnership proceeded to Twelve for Birds. And we worked on the first, second, third, and fourth series, which was the Brazen edition. On the Brazen edition, we had different writers, which was, uh, they were Anne Mora, um, Alea Kassan, and Laura Ekumbo. And the three uh, ladies who now run the LAM sisterhood thought, you know what, we also want to work with you. And yeah, so they gave me an opportunity to also direct the Brazen edition, which was, uh, which was basically um, a retelling of um, a retelling of Kenyan heroine stories from the side of from our side. We've always had stories about um, about our heroes told from the side of the oppressor. So for the first time, we were hearing it from our side, and women have been excluded from time immemorial from history. So this time we decided, you know, they decided and then they brought the stories to me. They are going to do it differently. They are going to tell the stories of women. They are going to put women where they're supposed to be because women did a lot to fight for our independence. And it ended up being a very beautiful show we learned a lot, we formed very good relationships and yeah. So yes, that's, I think <laughs> too much about myself. <laughs> it's never too much, it's never too much. I have so many questions. I don't even know which one to start asking. Um, <laughs> so Wanjiku, you spoke about kind of your transition from being an actor into directing. Um, mm -hmm. How has your sort of background in, in acting influenced your practice as a director, if at all? Mm -hmm. It, it really has because um, that's where I'm comfortable. I find that there's a quote that Jodie Jod, Jod Foster said, um, mm. if, you, if, you, if you want to understand, if you're a director and you want to understand actors, act, you'll be humbled, mm. which mm. is true. Uh, and that kind of, that humility is what mm. I bring to my craft because most of the time I'll find an actor has a problem that I already went through when I was acting mm. or can resonate with at the time because I can also, I also have that in my system. I, 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 I practiced the craft and I was very dedicated to my acting. I still love acting. Like acting is amazing. You know, actors are just beautiful human beings who give their souls and their everything to a role. So that also that usually is where I'm comfortable as a director. Of course, there's a lot that comes with directing the story, mm. um, the design, and everything. But acting, my conversations with actors, that's where I feel like this is it. This is home, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, just to follow up on some of the responses for our audiences, uh, mm -hmm. the, the Lamb Sisterhood that uh, Wanjiku mm -hmm. mentioned will actually be a part of this series in the coming weeks. So it's going to be exciting to hear from from their perspective. Uh, you know what that process was like. Um, but just to go back to one thing that you said is that in between that journey, you found yourself pregnant and your mom <laughs> and uh, yeah. I'm a very proud auntie to Shani and Naya so I yes. <laughs> um you know just given given that we we speak about the idea of directing as mothering as the sort of title of our episode um mm -hmm. how did that change your life if at all I'm sure of course it did, but like how did it change your life <laughs> okay so first of all as a director as a director yes first of all as um when I directed the first, um, first we won't forget the first run of we won't forget. I was pregnant, 
and the first run of 24 birds, I was pregnant. And it said that when you're pregnant, your empathy levels rise. So I feel like that, that really impacted my style without me knowing mm. because I could really, I could resonate with the stories and the actors on another level. I felt very connected to them, to what they were going through. I could, I could actually feel the pain of the characters and it's, it's helped me, it's helped me understand how to deal with people better, being a mom and all. Mm. And also being an, uh, there's no, it's not a very big Do difference to be a mom and a director because, um, and we've had this conversation before, sometimes I'll come for rehearsals and I'll be blocked and then I'll go home, look at my kids and I'll get an instant idea of what I'm supposed to do as a director because um, inherently we are all children deep down. So sometimes mm -hmm. you can just understand, oh, this is what the actor is going through. If the child is being difficult, for instance, I'll understand, oh, the child is just trying to communicate to me, with me. So if my actor was difficult in the during rehearsals, I'll realize I'm not listening or this is what I need to do as a director to actually get them to open up and feel confident in the process or in me. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, this is just, I mean, it's so interesting how you're kind of translating the sort of experiences that you're having in the household within a, within a space that is professional. Um, mm. What other things do you do or do you think about when you walk into a rehearsal room? Is there a ritual? Is there a kind of space that you aspire towards creating? Tell us a bit more about what it would be like for our viewers today if they were walking mm -hmm. into your rehearsal room. Okay, so um, I try as much as possible to create a safe space for everyone. That means mm -hmm. complete vulnerability. Um, because there's no way we are going to be at our best as actors, as performers, as artists, if we are not completely open. And um, so that is usually the first thing. I want us to bond as much as possible. I want to create a space where everyone feels heard, everyone feels seen, and we leave all our, all our problems at home. And the, any person who's practiced theatre knows that the first thing is working out. Like the first, first 30 minutes of warm up just usually just helps us like leave things behind. And for some of my shows, not all of them though, um, we usually have um, a little activity where we walk around the space at different energy levels and we literally envision ourselves leaving the day behind and wearing the body and everything that becomes the artist. There's a lot of meditation, there's a lot of introspection and there's a lot of letting go. Um, I prefer to concentrate on the process rather than the product. Um, it's a learning, it's a learning process for me too. Um, if you'd have asked me this a year ago, I'd have told you, yeah, I've had it. But the more I work with people, like recently I worked with Ogutu Moraya, who's also of the same opinion that, you know, process trumps product. And he also taught me different ways of going into that. And as a director, I feel like that's, that's the thing that I will bring to the table. If you allow me, I'll tell you the, my first experience as a director, which was horrible because I thought that directing was supposed to be about shouting and being the boss and, uh, and you know, asserting my dominance in the space and <laughs> it is not. So by the end of, before the show, one of the actors approached me and she was a dear friend of mine. And she told me that, you know, when you come with that energy to the, in the space, it makes us shrivel and we can't, we can't just be ourselves. And that's why every time you leave the rehearsal room, things just flow and then you come back and then we're all scared of you. And I was like, oh, wow. So I learned two lessons. One, that that process does not work for me because I do not want to make my actors 
Shiv will learn them to be at the best that they can be. And the other lesson that I learned was listening as a leader, because as challenging as that is, that if I hadn't listened to that lady at that time, I wouldn't have gotten to where I am. I wouldn't have learned that important and valuable lesson. And after that, I had to lock myself up. After that show, that show was not the best, but I still stand by it. I'm proud of my work. That was the best I could do at the time. Um, once I sat down and thought about it, I realized it's more important to get an actor to a place, to a better place than I found them, rather than getting perfection, because perfection is so far-fetched and it, it actually does not exist, you know? And by shouting and asserting my dominance, all I was doing was reflecting my insecurities because I'd been an actor and I knew the kind of mm. um, excellence I wanted to bring to the table, you know? Mm. This is the, the kind of process I go through as an actor. So of course you as an actor need to do that because I usually mm. give brilliant performances. You as my actor should do that. So it wasn't productive in any way. And nowadays I'm, I'm okay with an actor delivering one, one amazing moment I'm okay with that. If that's not where you are when we started rehearsal, I am okay with letting you go and letting you just blossom in that one moment, even if you couldn't deliver a whole show, you know? And it's not it's not something that a lot of people are actually like okay with um, mm -hmm. because we are very product driven as the entire world. So sometimes mm -hmm. people are like, oh, why, 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 why not focus on making this person excel, you know? And that's also another lesson in directing you. There are things you can't make an actor do. They have to be there as an actor. So if you cast that person, mm -hmm. that's on you. And you have to accept them as they come. Same way, you can't give birth to a child and then return them to their mm -hmm. maker and tell them, okay, she, she's broken. <laughs> give me another one. You know, <laughs> you have to mold this child as they come and, and accept anything they do wrong as a reflection of just growth. You know, this is what, this is what needs to happen. This is their journey. And every actor has their journey. Mm. Mm. Oh, you you know I just first of all I want you to direct me <laughs> please um, <laughs> we've, yes, uh, just, please. just context we've talked about working together for such a long time I think yeah. uh, we do work together in various capacities but I, I, yeah. I'd love to just be your apprentice in a room um, and, and yeah. learn about your process um, and so would I Thank you. I mean, how, how, I guess, I guess, you know, this I think is coming also from a personal place, um, which I'm curious about, you know, in the Kenyan theater industry uh, mm -hmm. and also in the, in the international work that you've done at the Kampala mm -hmm. International Theater Festival and mm -hmm. um, various other opportunities you've had. How do you navigate creating that safe space that you've spoken so eloquently about? Um, how mm -hmm. do you facilitate that growth, but then also mm -hmm. navigate the sort of unspoken pressure of the product? that there has to be something on stage at some point. Yeah. Um, and fortunately, unfortunately, not everything that you've directed is in progress. So how, mm -hmm. how do you make sure that the work is on it on the stage and it's you know open to thousands of people to come and watch whilst also keeping the, the, the rehearsal space a temple? Um, I'm reminded of two um two things part of creating is learning how to let go you know um so i'll get back to that the other thing i'm reminded of is like it's growth it's a journey um i remember during ktf um the kenya international theater festival it was high pressure it was a very big production Kenya? The, the oh, Kenyan sorry, National Kampala. Sorry. Oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. okay, okay. I'm just making sure if it was. <laughs> I got I was like, wait, there. wait. Did we yeah. talk about Kenya? Please tell me about that <laughs> festival. <laughs> no, I meant the Kampala International Theatre Festival. Thank you. Um, 
it was very high pressure. And um, I was I'd taken on the role of associate producer with NBMTI, and I was also directing. And um, you were with me there, you know, it was like, we wanted to give like a remarkable show for this beautiful audience. And part of my growth is understanding that it wasn't about, now the lesson that I learned and I took home with me was, it wasn't about um, the show by the end of the day. The show ended up being whatever it ended up being, it was beautiful, but it was about how now that I look back, it was about how I, how I as a director carried myself and how I protected my actors. At that point, I don't believe I did my best to create that safe space because there was a lot, there was a lot going on. And um, my insecurities from CG, the first production that I did, <laughs> thinking that this is it, you know, this is this is how this is what I have been working towards, you know, and all that unnecessary pressure that I was putting on myself, that made me not create the space that I wanted to create. But that being said, that was also a very big, impactful lesson that I learned. And moving forward, I know, I know now how to, how to create that what I how to believe in myself enough to say okay um, I understand that things don't go this way in certain certain spaces but this is how I do things and if by the end of the day the product is not up to par I at least we are all safe we are all happy and but the beauty of that whole experience is also having a team of people that held held me you know and that's another lesson I came out with I had like an, a remarkable team of people who are always there to to work with me and it 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 also taught me to ve to be very careful about my team because when I'm not at my best my team carries me and if my team is not there for me then yes you know <laughs> so yeah so KITF 2019 was a very, very big, and I call it like life defining experience for me because it made me, it helped me like step back, especially this year and just cruise mm -hmm. through everything and, and take stock and be like, okay, so there is merit in my, in my style. There's merit in how I approach directing and I shouldn't let go of it, you know? Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. yeah. And I, there's a, there's something I always remember. Um, there's an, I'd, I'd say an idol of mine called Carol Odongo. She's a lovely woman and a brilliant Kenyan director. She's phenomenal. And <laughs> the first time I met her after being awestruck for CG How Long, <laughs> um, I. I finally got to my the guards to ask her like a couple of questions on directing. She she told me it will all make sense with time. Just give it time. Mm. Mm. And when every when when I and whenever I'm in, under pressure now, I go back to those words and I'm like, okay, regardless of the space, regardless of the experience, regardless of the people, it's about time. So if mm. And the same thing with actors. If um, if um, if an actor is not there yet, it's about time. You know, this is their first show, and let them go through their journey. Let that actor fall. Let her succeed. Let that actor get just get their own experience, as opposed to interfering with the actor's process. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, what I hear you saying really is giving people space and time to breathe. Mm -hmm. and holding the space for them but also making sure the space is held for you for you to fall mm -hmm. back yeah. um oftentimes you know in different contexts that's not necessarily done in the same way and mm -hmm. so it's it's really interesting to hear about your experiences when it hasn't happened and how that's mm -hmm. been for you and and when it has and what that has mm -hmm. helped you uh, uh mm -hmm. you know grow from uh yeah. but 
talking about idols and mentors actually that was mm-hmm. the next question i wanted to ask you um uh-huh. who who are some of the people first of all just to say i think there's an entire generation of young people that look up to you as their idol myself included oh. <laughs> um <laughs> and 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 so who who are the people you look up to and why what about their work fascinates you why are they people that are on your radar you know how did they get on your radar um mm-hmm. tell me more about who you would have on your official sort of empowerment committee <laughs> that have made you who you are today <laughs> um like i said there there's there, there's carol odongo i've already mentioned her i find her work amazing especially her work with actors her nickname in the industry is coach so it tells you a lot about her process and how how nurturing she is to the actors um there's also julie saro i love that woman um i i was lucky enough to go for a refresher course this early this year at the beginning of this year with sanifo productions they had held a directors workshop and julissa was just amazing in how she helped you could see like you could tell this is the energy she brings into a rehearsal room and when she talked about her process it was just like wow yeah <laughs> and then there's shiba shiba hast i love that woman i love her because she empowers she she's like a giver of I don't know I don't know how to explain it being in a room with Shiba just makes you be the best that you can be and then there's a lot of women but <laughs> they've all escaped my mind but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> but the, the 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 other people that I can think of is Good Ink Good Ink have been there for me through like thick or thin and I remember when I we were working together and I was pregnant and I told them I told um I think it was Zosi Kadzitu um I told her I don't want to give up because a lot of women give up after they've given birth and she was like okay and when I was ready to give up on directing and just be whatever she came to my house she and Miriam Kadzitu they came to my house and they they held my hand and they were like no you're going to direct the next show because we want you to direct the next show do you want us to carry your baby for you we shall do that so those are some of the experiences with those women that have just like made me realize these other people that i want on my committee mm-hmm. at hold it mm-hmm. and then there's you girl <laughs> there's also you <laughs> i oh. can't leave you out from that team you You're just an amazing person and the lamb sisterhood the lamb sisterhood <laughs> has been there for me like they 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 made me i remember dream brazen they made me their whole and their experience with brazen just made me blossom more as a director as a young female director it made me embrace my awkwardness it made me embrace my brilliance mm. it made me just be and Mm. and 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 just summon all the heroines that have fought for Kenya and for the world so yeah mm. that is my team i'm sure there are mm. a lot of other people that have left out <laughs> it's just um, they're all standing behind you pushing you up they're all there yeah. they're all there yeah. it's beautiful oh. you know you know you mentioned shiba you mentioned the lamb sisterhood you mentioned so many folks that i know personally that you've worked with and that you continue mm-hmm. to work with mm-hmm. um now like for example miriam shiba producers mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. the lamb sisterhood are writers for for our mm-hmm. viewers who may not have context i'm just you know yeah. um, uh, thank you presenting thank that you. Uh, how, how and you're a director and how mm-hmm. i guess the question i want to ask is how does that change or does that affect the way you're working in a room together because often times yeah. within various contexts the mm-hmm. producer mm-hmm. becomes the decision maker logistically mm-hmm. um or the writer kind of has a specific say with the kind of text mm-hmm. they want on stage of course mm-hmm. you know and in many ways the, you know uh, from what i've heard you say from my experiences directing really becomes mm-hmm. a way to navigate all of these other external like the designers mm-hmm. and our and producers and uh, the writers to to put this new new piece of work on stage or mm-hmm. whether it's a 
new work or not you, you know uh, what i'm saying yeah. is that i understand directing more is like this idea of facilitating but mm-hmm. well, how how does your how is your relationship affected or how is your presence as a director affected in the room especially when some of these people have titles like they're your producer or mm-hmm. uh, they're calling the shots and you aren't um um i'll speak I that's or... clear Yeah, it's very clear. Thank okay, you. Great. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll speak of my experience with Miriam Kazitu as producer. Um the the we had a code of sorts every time we'd work together, we still do. Um we don't we trust each other enough not to interfere with the work that someone is set out to do. For instance, um for instance if i've come up with the creative um vision of the entire show miriam and i will have a lot of pre-production meetings where she gets to understand like okay so this is your vision that is why you are so persistent on getting this particular bottle for the production design and she won't trample my decision just because she is like the producer she will try to accommodate their vision and believe in it as much as possible and i've i've not worked with shiba on a creative project per se as the producer but i've also seen her um i was lucky enough to shadow um the director of written on the body mugambi ndiga when he was directing the show and i i, was, I just marveled at how shiba would work how she would also create space for for the director and not interfere she would make sure she was more of a cushion to the director than a hindrance and that's the same same thing i've experienced with miriam she'll be there to cushion you and she'll be there when you're venting because as much as i love actors and they are the best people in the world they could also be very 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 um yeah i won't finish that statement so on those nights when you're like oh, they will come and they will they will be your shoulder basically and you also have because of our relationship i have i have so much respect for them that i never want to give them anything other than my best when we are working and when it comes to the lamb sisterhood we also have that conversation before i'm like um so once you give me the script i'm the director and you're the actors or you're the writers so you let go of the script and mm. trust that yeah trust that i i i have read the script i've internalized the story and i am ready to to hold it down and um with with brazen specific sorry <laughs> with brazen specifically yeah with brazen specifically we had a lot of meetings and because i also was the dramaturg for the production mm. it it helped them like let go as writers mm. you know mm. and also trust me and i feel like we had a very beautiful experience in that way because they let go and they just that trust that trust is is hard to achieve i'm not going to mm. lie it's, it's work but it happens over time over time working together and even knowing each other personally helps yeah. a lot yeah yeah so yeah so i just want to sorry i don't mean to interrupt you question. just wanted to ask oh, you okay. totally have but i i yeah. try i'm like trying to catch you just as you're finishing a sentence because i'd love mm-hmm. for you to speak a little bit more about um what it's like to be directing people that have been writing the piece and then all of a sudden they're actors and then they jump out to become the dramaturgs and then so mm-hmm. there's constantly <laughs> shifting roles right within our context mm-hmm. you're not just only the director you can't ever just be the director i feel mm-hmm. um yeah. here specifically how how does mm-hmm. that manifest even when it comes to power dynamics not only that mm-hmm. i think you've spoken mm-hmm. about that but when it mm-hmm. comes to cr- collectively creating a piece but then being mm-hmm. told oh, you is the director mm-hmm. um mm. I've, i've actually like come to think of it most of my productions have had the actors also being the writers or the writer being the producer so again it just goes back to the element of trust but how that works is like for instance with abusens and gatia 
we used to have like an entire ritual where we'd meet at the cafe above our Kenya National Theater. And <laughs> they would lit I'll literally come with a, a printed copy of the script, hand it to them, and then tell them, now pass me the script. Okay, you've given me the script. I am now the director. You are now officially not writers. But that works only after you've worked on the script like a lot as now the drama tag, enough for the writers to be confident enough to be like, okay, so we are okay with this copy. It, it, it involves a lot of communication. And in that way, you foster a lot of trust. And for the first 24 birds, it was not as easy as I'm saying it, but by the time we got to the second 24 birds, we were already like accustomed to, oh, so this is how it goes. And and Abu, Abu, Abu Sansa and Gatia would easily like, just let go of the script. And, and they are good in that way. They will leave the director her space or his space to create, to come up with what, and give them whatever they need to grow and blossom. And that's also my experience with um, with the Lamb Sisterhood. Um, they also like have that ability. Once they have a finished work of art, like work, finished script, they'll be like, okay, Sawa, here's your script. Um, we are done. We are not going to um, to interfere. And I remember with um, with Brazen, Mora had this beautiful moments where she'd have a discovery about a line after I'd talk it through with an actor. And then she'd be like, oh, I didn't even know that. And I was the writer. And she had the grace of saying that in front of the other actors, which even if it's not true, even if she's just playing it <laughs> for confidence sake, it gives the other actors a lot of reassurance. But it's not easy also having the writers in the room because the other actors will constantly ask a question and then turn to the writers. So if you have the support of the writers, they'll just be like, me, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not the writer over here, I'm an actor just like you. So maybe ask the director. So that's mm -hmm. how, how we've, that's the dynamic we've created with those productions. It's always been like, this is your turn, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And almost quite literally a physical gesture of like I'm handing this <laughs> over to you now kind of is yeah. also um, something that I hear you <laughs> saying as part of your process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's just um, being dramatic, but it helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we are in the field, right? So I think right? we're justified. <laughs> Keep yeah. the drama on the stage and out of our personal lives. That's really the, exactly. the way we go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, let's switch gears a bit uh, in mm -hmm. the last few minutes that we have together. Okay. What do you do to feed yourself artistically? You mm. help others grow so much in the room. So how do you grow? How do you, beyond the rehearsal room, how, what do you watch? Mm. What do you do to um, excite yourself artistically? Mm. Okay. Um, so for a long time, it's been, I love movies by specific directors. There are specific directors I look for who feed me and feed my style. Um, I've recently also become like very keen on the kind of books I read. Um, I read a lot, not as much as I want to, but yeah. Um, what kind of books do you read? <laughs> <laughs> um, I like character driven narratives, whether it's a movie, whether it's a book, whatever. Um, I also read a lot of screenplays because it helps you. It's something I got from a certain director called Elia Kazan. Um, when you're not in, process, in the process of a production, it's better to get a script from wherever and still work on it like you'd, you'd do when you're, not, when you're in production. So the same, same steps you take, whether it's like breaking down the script um thinking of the vision thinking of production design thinking of everything like seeing literally seeing the production on stage it's actually helped me a lot especially during this covid season because 
not been working as much as we'd like to. Um, so that has been like, it's like constant exercise. And it's, it's actually, okay, it's different when it's theory, because once you're there and there's the pressure, there are a lot of things that change, but it's helped me get a firmer grasp on like the story and the world of the story and becoming and belonging. Um, I've also recently realized there's a beauty in taking music and other forms of art, like a, a painting and try to, or a photo, photos also work. Um, trying to build a world around it. Like for instance, with music, taking an album and actually like listening to the album and trying to envision what the artist is going through from song to song to song to song. That usually feeds me a lot. Um, and um, working on myself as a human being, <laughs> um, the a lot of introspection I've realized we were speaking with um, also a director in Kenya, a new director, she's called Nyokafi Masharia. And we were talking about how directing is basically, it's a journey of self growth because there's so many challenges that are thrown at you as a person, as a leader and how you react in that moment just makes or breaks the show or past the show, the, um, the post-production basically. So we've just been, we had that conversation and that's to me is a perfect summary of directing. It's just self-growth and I've realized a lot of introspection and working on myself and working on the things that I, I expect the actors to bring, like working on my physicality, working on my acting, working on all these things that gives me more confidence and more knowledge and wisdom when I go into that room. I'm constantly, not ready, but constantly preparing. Yeah. So that's what feeds me when I'm not in production. I just love the fleeting moment, the idea that every moment of yours is that you are constantly preparing, even when you're in the rehearsal room. Um, or even when you're walking in. And the fact that you're preparing is what makes you ready. Go ahead. <laughs> it's a work in progress. I'm not going to live, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> we all are, we, we all are, we all are. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah we all are. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm, I'm conscious of time, so I'm gonna ask you two last questions and, and okay. then we can wrap it up. But, uh, you know, my first question for you, well, not first, but my first of the last two questions. <laughs> First and last two questions for you is, um, tell me a bit about your, some of your more international work and mm -hmm. um, how, or if you can speak to one specific example um, mm -hmm. and, and tell me how, what you found different about working abroad than working here. Okay. Um, and maybe what you wish we had here or what they wish they had of us. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'll speak of my experience with Da International Theatre. Mm. Um, yeah, it's in it's based in Serbia. I went there last year, I think. Yeah, last year, and um, it was it an amazing like experience. Ago corona, right? right? <laughs> yeah, it was like it's been five years. <laughs> no, it's just been a year. So um, the the best part of it, I've always been in very fascinated with movement theater because when i was an actor we used to have conversations of this talking head plays where you're just constantly seated and talking to a person you're not using your element your entire instrument you know so when i went to da for the the i'd call it a residency it was amazing seeing how the director worked with the actor from the body before they got to the text. That to me was just mind blowing. And I was like, oh my God, yes, this is, this is something I really want to take home. And um, it forces the performer to understand the te text that they have not seen with their body before they can actually like tell the story. 
and what essentially what it does it makes you like own your body own your instrument to an extent of no matter what is thrown at you you know how to communicate whether no in whatever form or manner you are you're all constantly ready and the amount of energy they had on that stage was mind blowing because i remember i was i had chills the whole time just watching their final performance it was just beautiful and um because we've had those conversations with actors at home that's the one thing i feel like our 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 dark times in theater which was when i feel when we were so um so stuck to british faces um not as a fault of ours because we were colonized and our playwrights like ngobi wadiongo were exiled and all that it's because so because of that we were just used to i'll sit a talk i sit you talk i'll talk and it's helped actors in whatever ways that it's helped them but that that movement that um understanding of the body is what was lacking to be honest i've seen a lot of film actors recently and tv actors actually pushing themselves actors like audi roa she's a phenomenal brilliant actor um and um mwajuma bell and mwaoranganga they have been like pushing themselves to do a lot of physical acting um so yeah so that's changing and that experience that i i got i'm definitely definitely ready to now impart it on any actor that i work with like more and just see them grow in that way um to be honest what i feel like we could give is heart <laughs> there's a certain kind of like there's a performance by a kenyan actor you see it and you're just like what was that like we have mm. really brilliant actors who have who bring so much so much heart so much commitment to a role and so much believability that it's just it's mind blowing mm. and in my head i'm thinking of Brian Ogola like any performance of his that you see you cannot separate him from the car you can you can definitely see this is Ogola this is the character but there's so much he's given so much of himself to it and he's just one in the list of actors that we have that i'm like if you guys if people can out there can just see what you do oh man yeah so that's something i am of course there are brilliant actors all over the world but that is something that i can confidently boast about when it comes to our actors without mm. a doubt yeah mm. Mm. yeah yeah well i mean you've mentioned so many names so many companies mm-hmm. in our conversations so hopefully what our viewers will be able to do is you know either comment on our posts uh, asking mm-hmm. for clarification or you know search yeah. them up and 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 really get a, a peek sneak peek into this world that is mm-hmm. thriving over here um my final question for you is and you've sort of answered this but just for our younger audiences out there um an aspiring young african director what would you say to him or her <laughs> um it gets better <laughs> um, just... <laughs> okay <laughs> fair enough um, fair enough <laughs> yeah but um learn like i mentioned before work on yourself like it's so it's so interesting how when i was acting i was so consumed in working in the craft and i'm not mm. saying this is typical to all actors this is just my personal experience when i was acting i was so keen on i want to master my body i want to master my voice i want to to read more and work on my memory skills and as a director it's totally different i want to work on myself and in that way the more i work on myself the more i challenge myself to work on my body and to work on my voice and to work on my craft it just translates so flawlessly because every day i'm like if i'm going to tell that actor to learn 
a new language because it sharpens or it it's it's somehow enriches them as an actor why am i not doing it myself you know if i'm telling this actor to read more why am i not doing it myself because integrity is so important to me i end up just naturally doing it because i'm working on myself mm. so yeah so work on yourself yes read yes work on your craft but working on yourself and being self aware helping yourself be self aware as a leader mm. just makes everything so much better in directing so much easier <laughs> because <laughs> yeah because you're not you're not like projecting your insecurities 24/7 in that rehearsal room you're not you're not breaking a human being when an actor is not at their best you know you're not yeah you're just bringing goodness into a room and yeah so work on yourself in short <laughs> yeah self awareness so is uplifting mm Oh, I mean, you're so uplifting you. with everything you say. So thank you, thank you for that piece of wisdom. Um, thank you. Is there anything else you you you'd like to add before we say goodbye to our viewers today? Not really, but I really thank you for this for having me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank it was you. Brilliant. I've had a lovely time, and thank you for the conversation. It's also given me a lot to think about. <laughs> Thank you so much Anjiku for taking yeah. time on your Monday evening for uh, making the time for us to share your journey and I hope that uh, people are able to follow you on on your social media um, and keep yeah. abreast of your uh, work as we move forward. Uh, if you want to share your handles with us let us know. Yeah. Yes. Um I'm mostly active on Instagram and my Instagram handle is um at @wanjikomavuganga <laughs> I'm sure if people, I'm sure Mwabuganga is like really complex but um you, it's on the it's on the okay. screen so yeah, people should so be able to follow you. Wanjiko yeah and then there there's, we go. um my Twitter handle is Wanjiko Mwavu so without the ganga and yeah so those are my most active social media awesome. yeah thank you so much Wanjiko um You're thank welcome. you all so thank much you. from tuning in from around the world um i just want to wrap up by uh thanking our two three sign language interpreters just a quick note that this is actually the first series that how round is doing that has both american sign language and kenyan sign language interpretation so for our viewers thank you uh thank you so much to lucy who was earlier um, our ksl interpreter and to rafael uh for your time and of course thank you so much to julia for for holding the fort for our american sign language interpretation um thank you to the howlround series and we will see you same time same place at the comfort of your cushioned couches uh next week with asimwe who will be our panelist asimwe debora kawe who's a playwright from uganda so we hop on to our neighboring country to chat a little bit about the art scene over there Thank you again Wanjiku. Thanks everybody. Oh, okay. Bye. Bye.